Hey everybody, welcome back to the Renaissance Woodworker. I'm your host, Shannon Rogers, and welcome into my shop. I get a lot of questions about people just getting into the craft of woodworking, and it's really exciting because they're asking about hand tools and how they can get started with hand tools. One of the most common questions I get, however, is what kind of a bench do I need to get started, or do I need a bench to get started? And for better or for worse, there's a lot of talk about workbenches in the woodworking world today. And beasts like this Rubo are, are often very common recommendations. Whether it's a Rubo bench or a Nicholson style bench or a German continental style workbench, a lot of people get it in their head that they have to have one of these in order to just start woodworking. Now, if you look around my shop, I've obviously got an eight foot, probably 500 pound Rubo bench here. I've got my joinery bench off to the side. So you may think, you know, you have to have the bench. Well, I did a lot of work before I built this. In fact, if you look at my blog, you can see when I built this. It was, what, about three years ago. And I obviously did work woodworking before this bench came along. So when you're getting started, I, I really want to caution people that they have to start with the bench. Now, Rather than focusing on a workbench as your first project, Focus on a few bench appliances and you'll be able to turn any horizontal surface, whether that be a kitchen table, piece of plywood over some sawhorses, into an effective workbench or effective working surface. First and foremost, the bench hook, or sometimes I call this a pairing hook, is going to be your best friend. Bench hook is really just a flat board with a cleat on the bottom and a small fence on the top. Now, I call this a pairing hook because my, uh, my fence up top here is a little under 3 16ths of an inch thick. When I run it up against the surface of a table or something like that, I can take my work and it will slot up against that fence and I can do all kinds of stuff on the surface. Because this fence is really low, I'm able to do all kinds of joinery work, whether I'm working with chisels or saws or anything like that, without running into that fence on the back. When you're not doing joinery work or chopping dovetails or anything like that, you move your bench hook aside and you'll need to create a, a planing hook. And that is best done with something low profile. Again, I've got a piece of quarter inch plywood. This is just home center plywood, so it's probably actually 3 16ths of an inch thick. And I'll grab uh, some cleat material. It's just some poplar here. And I'll make myself a planing stop. Now you may think, well, I don't have a bench to work on. How am I going to make the planing stop? Well, this is just a couple of boards that need to be cross cut. And the large portion of the sizing of the stock is actually not done at the bench. It's done at a sawing bench. And this is something that's just made out of plain old construction timber from Home Depot, from any of your home center of choice. And it's a couple of joints here and there, but a lot of instances it's screwed together and um, nailed together in some places. So you grab your saw and I've taken my plywood piece here and I've, I've marked it out so that it is as wide as uh, a tabletop or a piece of plywood, whatever it is you're using. And you'll see that I can create this, I can create this planing stop without ever even needing my workbench. Set that aside and I'll need some cleat material. So I just want to mark out an approximate length here. And I'll cross cut this off. So what work holding have I used so far? Nothing but body weight. Just holding the piece down to my saw bench. And before I built that saw bench, I worked on just a, a small bench, a small stool that uh, you know would, was mostly used for resting your butt on. So now I take my planing stop and I'll just take an, another piece of kind of equal thickness just to hold it up out of the way. And 
and grab a clamp. Two of them actually would be good. Let's throw one back here. Just to hold it firmly in place. Grab a drill. Any drill you've got will work and a small bit for nails. Can even use something like a bird cage all to start this hole. And then uh, I'll grab a hammer and some nails. Put the whole thing together. You could certainly also use screws. For this, the key is you want to make sure you recess your screws below the surface, and that's where the birdcage awl is helpful because it puts a conical hole in here that will allow me to drop the head of the nail below the surface. Now, this fence we have here will butt up against the side of your tabletop. Now with a cleat attached on the bottom, you can butt that up against the top of your work surface and you can even come along and clamp it down on one end. I made it longer than the bench is wide, so I can now come over to the other side and put a clamp here too. Actually, let me put it on the leading. And then grab a plane, grab your workpiece. Now I've got a great bench stop that I can butt my piece up against. It's secured in two places here. So it's really quite firm. It's now got a really firm surface to work against. And it's a really wide surface, whereas if I just took like a small scrap or something and clamped it down, I'd only be working against that center point. That works just as well too, but on a wider board, it will want to pivot around. But on a wide surface like this, I can work all the way across the board and it's not going to shift on me. Plus, the board's not clamped down. It's really easy to flip around, flip over, etc., and be able to work the other surfaces. Just with a piece of plywood and a scrap. This operates on the exact same principle as my bench hook. It's just now it spans across the entire surface of my work table. So what if I now needed to do some traversing work, work across in order to flatten this? Well, that's kind of a problem. I can move it up against my bench stop just like this and work, continuing to work right up against it. And you can see, again, I'm supported across the entire length of the board. Now, if you have a really long board, this is obviously not going to work. So what you do there, take it back, run it up against your bench stop, and grab some other pieces of scrap. I have some other just leftover pieces of plywood here. And I can butt them up against the bench, or up against the, the workpiece rather, grab some more clamps, and just clamp these scraps down to my work surface. Now they're held in place, and again, they are, you know, uh, what, 3 8 quarter inch plywood. So they're nice and low, so they're not going to get in the way of the plane moving across. Now, I can do the exact same thing, but now I'm actually got it kind of moved up into a corner, so I can't move this direction or this direction, and it's really firmly in there. I can do any planing I need to do. So using something just as simple as 
a piece of plywood nailed or screwed down to a clamp and a couple of just random scrap pieces as, as battens, I'm able to tackle any kind of surface work. The same thing would apply for joinery. If I needed to solid dado across the face of a board, I can essentially use the battens to work this up against a stop or into a corner and do the same thing. The difficulty we run into with this type of setup is once we move away from face work and we need to try the edge or uh, true up the, the end. Well, the end grain, that's easy. That can be done using your shooting board or your, your bench hook rather from earlier. Of course, if you have a shooting board, you can use that, but the bench hook is very similar to a shooting board. I don't have a dedicated chute on the side here, but now I could just run right up against my, my bench hook and shoot it that way. It's not the perfect solution because the fence back here doesn't provide full support. You can end up with some spelching. Um, if your surface is not really flat, you could have some problems. So in that instance, you could go ahead and build yourself a shooting board or you can buy yourself a shooting board. There's some great manufacturers on the market like the Super Shoot by Vote Toolworks. But the end grain can be handled just the same way you would as the, the, the faces by putting it flat down on the bench. The edge grain becomes a little bit more of a problem because, you know, normally I would use something like a leg vise or face vise to clamp it down to the front. Well, in this instance, you need clamps again. Now you probably need uh, some longer clamps just to run it up against the edge of your tabletop, run the clamps across and clamp it down securely. The issue with something like uh, an everyday uh, tabletop is it's not very thick. This is a four inch surface that I can work against. So it provides me quite a bit of, of surface area to ride this up against. Another more, we'll say elegant solution is using one of these guys. This is a Jorgensen wooden clamp. You can take the board and clamp it vertically. Then you take whatever clamps you have at hand and you clamp the clamp down to your work surface. Now I can work very firmly held in this and I just pulled off a very, very thick shaving. There was a lot of force on this board. Plus I wasn't paying attention and I just went against the grain. So I exerted a lot of force this way. This didn't move at all. So the, the wooden screw clamp is an excellent solution for that. And it doesn't require a bunch of jigs or making alterations to your bench hook and it holds it really securely. Plus there's, there's very little um, length restriction here. I can take a nine foot board as long as I've got a surface that's nine feet long to place it on clamp this, this little get up at the end and I'm good to go. So let's keep this exact same get up going here. We'll loosen this up. We'll move the clamp over to the edge of our work surface. Clamp it down again. And now, look what we got here. I have a vertical vise that I can come in and cut dovetails all day long. This is operating off the same principle as the, the new Moxon vices, which brings me to another point. If you know that you're gonna be working without a bench for a long time, go out and buy yourself a, a Moxon kit or build a, a Moxon vise using wood screws or whatever, and that will lift the work up even higher. And all you've gotta do is clamp that setup down to the bench, just like we've done here. For that matter, once you have a full-blown workbench, you'll still find usage 
for something like a Moxon vise for all of your, your joinery work. You can use the same setup to cut tenons, clamp it down, and you can come in and saw out tenons as well. So really just a horizontal work surface combined with a few extremely useful appliances like the paring hook, the planing stop, and just clamps. Clamps, clamps, and more clamps and recognizing where the force is going to be transferred on the board and how to place a stop behind it. For, moreover, once you have got some sort of vertical clamping device set up, you can start to add more things to that. Things like a bird's mouth fixture that works as an additional work table. You can clamp it in place just like we did the board before. Now you can bring work up higher for carving. You can do fret saw work on this and you don't need the workbench below it. Now let's be honest, I'm demonstrating all this on top of a massive workbench. What this is providing for me that's something like a kitchen table or a piece of plywood on sawhorses doesn't is the weight, the sheer immovability of the object that I'm clamping all this onto. So is it going to work as perfectly as what I'm showing you here? Maybe not. You might have to chase the board or chase the table around the floor a little bit. Well, in that instance, maybe you put a couple of stops on the floor to prevent the table from moving, or you find a way to actually screw it down or secure the table itself. Throw some sandbags across the, uh, the bottom shelf or the trestle or something like that to make everything more immobile. I think if you build these, these work appliances and you saw how long this one took to make, this pairing hook was really very, was no different. It took a little bit longer because I chose to use solid wood and I had to glue up a panel here um, but the cleat on the bottom and the fence on the top is kind of the exact same setup. The bench hook and the pairing hook will allow you to do just about any work you want. Plus it will help build some hand tool skills. Building something like this bird's mouth fixture or this saw bench is really no different. You don't really need a massive workbench to build it on. Um, the, the work holding techniques you'll exercise using the, the pairing hook and the planing hook will allow you to build something like this, and then this can become a work surface as well. Most of the drilling I do for mortises I do just by taking my workpiece, sitting on it to hold it in place, and then I can bore down from there. You can chop mortises here. You can actually do quite a bit while seated on the sawing bench, let alone using it as a bench for breaking down rough stock. All of this will work in tandem to allow you to accomplish just about any task you need. And I think you'll find you work really fast and efficiently too, because if your work piece is not clamped down, you're not having to constantly unclamp and clamp up every time you need to shift the board around. When I'm planing, I'll take a pass sometimes, flip it up and check the ingrain, check it in a radicking light and put it back down. If I have to unclamp that board every time I do that, it's very inefficient style of working. Clamp your stops down so that the board is unable to move and your work will progress much, much faster. And all that's needed is a couple of scrap pieces and a horizontal surface to stick them on. I hope this episode has helped to dispel the myth that you have to have a workbench just to get started. Is it easier? Is it going to make your life better? Most definitely. I'm not going to tell you that the Rubo workbench wasn't the best thing I ever built in my shop, but it's not necessary. In fact, I urge people to start working without one. You'll gain a better feel for the type of work you want to do and what elements you need in your workbench. If you're really pressed for space and the time has come for you to build a workbench, then that's where something like this joiner bench or some call it the apartment workbench comes in handy. Next time, we'll take a much closer look at the joinery bench and how it can function as your sole workbench with a very, very small footprint. We'll see you then, guys. Thanks for watching.